Welcome. Uh, glad that you are joining us for our video podcast. Now, if you're someone who wants the full service, who wants welcome and announcements, wants prayers, wants music, you want to go back to the YouTube page and click on the link that says full service. For those of you that are like, listen, I just kind of want the message, this is the place for you. A chance for us to learn more about how do we live our life with Jesus in the midst of all of life. And so we're glad that you are joining us. If you want to find out more information, go to our website and check it out and click on whatever links most interest you. We're so glad that you're joining us. We look forward to continuing to connect with you and engage with you. If you have questions, if, if you have suggestions, if you have things you'd like to ask us about, the best person to connect with is Leah. She is the one who would love to connect with you online in a way to help you grow in your faith wherever you are at. Well, thanks for joining us. Let's jump into this week's teaching. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, the Christmas reading is found in the Gospel according to St. Luke, uh, chapter 2, reading verses 8 to 20. And this is a very familiar passage, I'm sure, for all of us. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, as we begin on this Sunday of Advent, which is the Sunday that focuses on hope, Our desire is that you would be the God who fills us with hope, not only today, but every day, because we know that we belong to you and that you are with us. Now speak to us, we ask, through your word, for we pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. A number of years ago, there was an S-4 class submarine that actually was in a collision and it was rammed off the coast of Massachusetts and it sunk into very deep water. This submarine became a death trap for all of the crew that were on board. And there were many efforts that were made to try to save the members, but ultimately to no avail. During one of the rescue attempts, a deep sea diver thought he could hear a banging noise. And what it was, was someone banging on the hull of the submarine from on the inside. But as he listened, he could familiarize himself with a pattern. And he realized that they were tapping out Morse code. And the same message was being repeated over and over again. And the message was this, 
Is there any hope? Is there any hope? That's a really important question for all of us to think about. Do we have hope? And in this fourth Sunday of Advent, that really is the theme that we are focusing upon. Because hope is essential for every single person, not just on this fourth Sunday of Advent, but for every single day, we need to be people of hope. So here's the question. What is hope? Is it simply wishful thinking? Or is hope an expression of a desire that we have? Let me give you an illustration. Last week, many people were hoping that the Hamilton Tiger Cats would win the Grey Cup. That is an expression of a desire. Wishful thinking is when we hope the Toronto Maple Leafs will win the Stanley Cup sometime before we all die. In other words, we don't think it's going to happen. When we look at Scripture, there is a different understanding about hope. Because hope is really a gift that is given to us by God. So no matter what the circumstances are that I am facing, I have hope because I believe that ultimately God is sovereign over everything that happens in my life. But I also have hope because I believe that God is faithful to the promises that he gives to us, which we find in Scripture. And I have hope because I choose to trust in God, because he states that his desire for each one of us is always focused on our good. We have a wonderful Christmas carol that is based upon the scripture that was read a few moments ago. The carol is, O Little Town of Bethlehem. But there is a line that we sing that says this, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. So what are your hopes? What are your fears? As you look into the future, we are on the edge of a new year. Do you have hopes and expectations? But do you also have fears that maybe these will never be realized? There are many biblical accounts of people living with hope, and God also at the same time addresses their fears. And so for generation upon generation, there was the hope that God would send his Messiah. That was promised hundreds and hundreds of years before it ever came to be. The prophet Isaiah, who lived about 800 years before the birth of Jesus, wrote these words. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And so for years, people lived with that hope. They lived that way generation after generation. And then we are told, in the fullness of time, or at God's appointed time, he sent his son. And that was the beginning with the introduction of the angelic message to a young woman called Mary. The angel appeared to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Now Mary wondered about this greeting, and you will see this over and over again, that when people have angelic encounters, often their first response is, they are terrified. Uh, when the shepherds saw that angelic host, the angels had to tell them, don't be afraid, we bring you good news of great joy. And so now the angel speaks and addresses the fear that Mary has. And the angel says, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, 
And you are to give him the name Jesus, for he will be great and will be called Son of the Most High God. That message that Mary received from the angel was a message that would change her life forever. She could not have had any idea of all the implications that would be for her life as the mother of the Messiah. Prior to this annunciation, Mary had plans for her own life. She had her own hopes and dreams. I mean, she and Joseph were engaged to be married. She was probably planning on setting up a house, maybe eventually having children, being able to be in a warm, stable environment in the little community in which she had grown up. And now, with the message that the angel gave to her, everything in her life would change. So here's the question. Would she be available for whatever God wanted in her life? But there's also Joseph. Joseph also had his hopes and his dreams. And he heard the story that Mary was going to tell him, that she had conceived the child by the Holy Spirit. Quite frankly, it was unbelievable. Who had ever heard that? How can that be? It's just not natural. That's not the way babies come into this world. There are some critics who say, well, Mary and Joseph really didn't understand the dynamics of biology. Listen, they knew how babies came into this world. And Joseph assumed that if Mary was expecting a child and he was not the father, that she had been unfaithful to him and somebody else was the father. These things just don't happen. Things such as the virgin birth. And so Joseph, we are told, was a righteous man. He was a good man. And he loved Mary. And so he decided not to embarrass her or to set her up, but that he would just quietly call off the engagement and move on with his life. And then God spoke. It's interesting what God said to Joseph. The first words are, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And she will conceive and give birth to a son. And you are to call him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Mary and Joseph, what a wonderful couple. What an interesting couple. They had their hopes and their dreams, and now it's all radically altered. Very often when our plans don't go the way we want, and the dreams that we have are changed, we can become anxious or even fearful of what's happening. And so God continually told them, don't be afraid. So as you and I live with our hopes and dreams, and sometimes we become anxious, we need to hear God's word in our hearts that can help to overcome our fears. And I would suggest the way to overcome our fears is found in this one sentence. I will trust God regardless. That's what Mary had to do. That's what Joseph had to do. And that's what we're called to do. Mary, just an ordinary young woman from a very ordinary little place. In fact, her village was a place of insignificance. She is going to be the mother of the Messiah. She is going to have this baby conceived by the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine what that would be like for her in that village? The people would gossip. When she first heard the message, I'm sure the question that went through her mind was, will Joseph reject me? Will he receive this message? And if he didn't, could she raise this child on her own? 
because being a single parent would not be easy. But there are five words that become the source of hope. And the five words are these. The Lord is with you. We need to understand that truth every single day. As the people of God, his promise is that he is with us always to the end. So Mary heard these words that were spoken by the angel. And so in hearing that truth that the Lord is with her, she makes this response. And she says, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. To put it into the vernacular of today, she might say, Okay, God, I'm in on the deal. What you want, I will do. Because she knew this truth, that if God is with her, that she could face the future, whatever it would hold, and she could look at every tomorrow with hope. That was also true of Joseph. In spite of his reservations, in spite of his doubts, in spite of all of his uncertainties, he chose to trust God. And he took Mary as his wife. And he was faithfully committed to her all of his days. You see, that's really what trust is all about. It's believing that God is with us. And as we believe that God is with us, we are able to move forward in this journey of life in spite of all the fears that we might have. This is not the first time God spoke to the fears of the people. The nation of Israel was caught in captivity by the Babylonians. And the people longed to be able to go back home. Who wouldn't? And amongst them, there were some religious leaders who were called false prophets, and they tried to give people a pseudo-hope. They said, don't worry, things are going to work out. We'll be home in no time. It's almost like saying, we'll be home by Christmas. And God said to his faithful prophet, Jeremiah, you need to speak truth into people's lives. They're not going to be home by Christmas. They're not going to be home in the near future. In fact, they're not going to go home until 70 years has passed. So tell them this. Settle down. Plant gardens. Grow vineyards. Get married. Have children. And pray for the peace of the, of the of country. And at the end of 70 years, they will return home. And then he said these words, which many throughout the ages have hung on to while we are waiting for God to fulfill his promise. And the words are these. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Now notice this. To give you hope and a future. This is the Sunday of hope as we celebrate Advent. My prayer is that you will discover hope that God wants to give to you. The prophet Isaiah wrote these words, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you and I will uphold you with my powerful right hand. God promises to give us hope in the midst of life. So here is God's gift of hope. When you are discouraged, hope will lift your spirits. When you are tempted to quit, it is hope that will keep you going. When you must wait, hope gives you patience to trust. And when you feel rejected or abandoned, hope reminds you that you are not alone. 
but that you will make it. And finally, when you have to say farewell to someone whom you love, hope in eternal life gets you through. God's message of hope, trusting in Him, will change your entire outlook in life. That song that we sing, O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Let's pray together. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen.